my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. What do you do when something feels very hard to learn? Well, most people, uh, by sheer intuition, everybody does this, we pull back a little, right? We don't want to challenge ourselves too much because we get frustrated and we can't do it. So we, we don't want to take on so much that we just, we feel hopeless, we get frustrated, I can't learn this, this will never end, you know, because then we just give up. So we don't want to do that. We want to feel comfortably challenged all the time. But that's only some of the time. And that's what, what, you know, we can make up rules for practicing, but we have to, we have to accept the fact that, you know, some, some, sometimes one principle will be very good to follow. Other times, another principle will be, and, and they kind of, uh, you know, oppose each other. But it doesn't have to be that way. Because there's another principle of not pulling back when it's too hard, but pushing even harder. Like say, say you have a you have a hard time learning bar chords, right? Because oh, your hand gets tired, and it seems like oh, it's a hassle. So you want to pull back a little. Maybe do a partial bar, right? Play at that F chord, or you know that whatever it is. So you make the challenge even easier. But sometimes you just want to make it even harder. And that might be against some of the stuff I say, where I say that if you take on ten things at one time. You're not going to move very fast because the brain simply can't process that many things and you'll never really master anything. You have to have focus. You have to have enough focus on a couple of things or a single thing for an extended period of time for your brain to actually you know, adjust to what you're doing. That is so important. But sometimes you don't want to make it easier on yourself. You want to make it much harder. So if you're having a hard time playing three note per string, uh, scale shapes, perhaps instead of going back to your two note per string pentatonics, you want to play three note per string blue scale shapes, right? You want to you want to struggle even harder and focus even more on making those happen because then when you return to something that is much easier, it's going to feel easy, right? It's what before was challenging and oh, frustrating. It's going to feel like a walk in the park because you've just been to war, right? You were, you were just in the ditch trying to survive because you were doing something that was just out of, out of this world crazy hard. And you were staying there and you pushed and pushed to learn it. Then when you return to something much easier, it's not challenging anymore. And what happens there is that your brain, your whole mind, your whole system changes its perspective on what you're doing. When you think something is frustrating and hard, your brain is shutting down basically. Because what frustrating and hard means, means that you're not getting rewarded for what you do. You put in a lot of effort, but it's too hard. So you don't get your reward. That's what too hard means. I'm not getting results here. That's what too hard is. And so the brain says, we don't want to do this. We want to shut off the, the, the enthusiasm, the, the passion against learning this. And we want to pull back and focus on something where we can actually get some results so we can be, feel motivated and feel accomplished and successful, right? And that's fine. But if you have the strength and the warrior mindset to push even harder, it means that you can grow even faster. So for instance, again, with the bar chord, if you feel that that's hard uh, to do bar chords, then you, you want to do nothing but bar chords for an entire month. You play every song, everything, only with bar chords. Huh, how do you like that, brain? Huh? You were pulling back? That's what you were, but I'm just pushing even harder, right? Uh, if you have a hard time learning you know, to play open string chords, maybe you want to go for bar chords instead of open string chords. You want to make it even harder on yourself and then just, you know, but that's a different mindset, isn't it? You know, you're frustrated, oh, this is too hard. And then you shift from this mindset of, oh, it's, uh, I can't do it, to just, I'm going to push even harder. You think you got me? You think that was challenging? Let me take on something that's much more challenging, right? And just do that for a week or for two weeks. 
then return back to what you thought was challenging before. And I promise you, your whole brain will be, oh, that's easy. Let's handle that. Right. And with that mindset, with that kind of emotional state, right, you're going to attack the challenge in a completely different way. You're going to feel accomplished just by doing it because it's so easy compared to what you have been doing. It's just the most amazing thing what happens there. Let me compare that to something we all know a little about, which is working out. Right? I had a hard time to, uh, getting faster when I was going for runs. I just couldn't get in better shape. I was just having, you know, it was always, oh, like, and I hated it because I never became any better. It was just like, oh, I have to go for a run so I don't get fat, so I don't get lazy, right? So I went for that run, and it was always like, oh, and I hated to push myself. I hated to run just a little bit faster than that was comfortable, really, sincerely. But then at some point, I heard about interval training where you walk for, you know, 45 seconds or something like that. And then you sprint, you give it all you have, like you run as fast as you possibly can, right? Where your legs are just, ah, I wonder if I'm going to fall over now. Um, and then you walk again. And that's pretty easy. The first sprint is like, well, that was nothing. The second sprint after the next 45 minutes of 45 seconds of walking is kind of, you know, and then the third is kind of exhausting. And the fourth, is, oh, right? And the fifth is just like, eh, eh, right? And the whole body is like, ah, right? Because you're pushing, you're sprinting instead of that, that uh, p instead of that trying to run a little bit faster than what's comfortable. And suddenly, my overall shape improved. I could then run faster even when I was not sprinting and just running. So because I'm pushing, I'm putting on much more than what's comfortable. Instead of trying to get there by eh, pushing a little, <laughs> it's uncomfortable, right? Then you make it extremely uncomfortable. And for some reason, that's just more comfortable, right? It's fun to sprint. But that slow, at least for me, that slow pain of ugh, I hate it, right? The same thing with uh, working out your muscles. Uh, uh, if you're 20, you don't have to do this, right? <laughs> when you get up my age, you have to start working out your muscles unless you want them to just be become a little less every year and you, you know, you get fat instead of having muscle and the fat replaces the muscle growth. So you have to do that if you want to stay right, fit and energetic and, and healthy. So, so, uh, but that was the same thing for like 20 years of working out. It was like a chore. It was like, I have to do this because, you know, um, and I didn't develop at all until it dawned on me that I had to push beyond what's comfortable. It's not the 10 reps of going for the bench press or the 12 reps. It's when you get to that point when you can't do anymore, and then you muster all your anger, all your frustration, everything, and then you push for that extra little half rep or one whole rep. That's where all the growth happens. It really is. You know, all the, it, all the others is just a preparation for it. So if, if that's what you walk into in your gym with that focus of this, is, this doesn't matter, the 12 reps doesn't matter, it's when I get to that point and then I push beyond what's comfortable. And if I can't push, it's always in here and not the muscles that give up first. It's always the brain that gives up first or you. And, and if, you, if you do that and you then go for uh, a lot more sets than you really meant to, you know, we do three sets Traditionally, you do three sets of 12 reps, right? But instead of doing three of the bench press, you do six, or you do eight, or you do 10. You exhaust the muscle, and you push it all you can when it's exhausted, and that works. That works. And it's exactly the same thing here, because that forces your body and your brain to expand. So you want to think about sprinting. You don't want to hurt your arms, your fingers, your elbow. You want to be clever about that. But you want to, instead of stepping back every time something's too challenging, that's what everybody does. If you want to have rapid progress, explosive progress, you want to push right where it's the hardest and say, okay, you think it's hard now? How about this, right? And I had that experience very recently when I was uh, practicing the sequences for our new program. Um, Pedal tone madness. Three note, three note per string, blue scale shapes, pedal tone madness, which gives you some incredibly uh, interesting uh, uh, challenges for your left hand because you're stretching a little bit and you're doing some uh, a lot of string shifting with your pick here and with your fingers and you get into situations where you have to do combinations of fingerings that's really uh, unusual. 
uh, in that program. So I practiced these eight sequences. Uh, and after practicing them, when I came back to playing just diatonic major minor scales, it was like, why are you playing so fast? Take it easy. It was like, why? I was just flying across the fretboard because suddenly it was like, oh, this is water. This is like nothing. Because when you're stretching your hand like that, you actually impair your ability to move your fingers. The more you stretch, the less you can really be accurate. So when you stretch your hand out like that and you still insist on fingering in the notes, playing the right notes in the right order, and you practice it with focus, then that is like a, a, a hundred or two hundred pound weight uh, above you that you have to push because you have to do something much harder. And then when you return to tune up a string blue scale shapes or, or, um, or your diatonic shapes, it's going to feel so easy that the brain just you know, it's the most amazing thing. It's like I rediscovered this principle uh, uh, right now because of that uh, program. So, and of course, I urge you to go watch that program or at least uh, check out the, the, the page there with all the information on it. Uh, it really is such a cool thing uh, to push yourself beyond what's comfortable instead of stepping back. So think about that. You can use this principle whether you go, you know, by the program or not. Just think about this. And really let it seep in and say, where in the past could I have pushed instead of, you know, where could I have been on the offensive instead of the defensive, right? With, with, uh, and get a lot more results. And then see if you can uh, build it into your practice schedule. And if you, uh, chances are you'll forget about this pr principle pretty rapidly. So make sure you can't. Put a reminder in your phone, put it on the wall, whatever you can to remember to do this because your natural inclination is to pull back, right? And then go check out the program. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.